Vermont Junior Drag for My name is Bill. If you haven't learned about it yet, go ahead and check out check us out at Junior Dragster Plus. Uh, that'll be you know I'll add a link at the uh, bottom of this uh, video here. And my name is uh, my username on the board is Wild Bill. Go ahead, ask it all the questions you want. There are no silly questions, just, you know, we've heard it all before, and we've all been there before, so go ahead, give us a shout out, and check us out, and we'll be more, we'll all be more than happy to help you. Now, on to the video. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Learning Junior Dragsters video, my name is Bill. Uh, today's video we're going to be talking about ignition timing, and setting the ignition timing, I'm going to be using Caitlin's ZR3 motor. Uh, it features the adjustable coil bracket, you know, adjustable timing bracket. Um, you could get by with either uh, using offset key waves or even uh, an adjustable flywheel if your motor has that. This motor doesn't. I don't have any adjustable or uh, offset key waves, so I'm just going to show you how to use, uh, you know, where you need to set the coil. And we'll also be discussing, uh, you know, how I set the coil gap. So let me bring you on in here and we'll get things started. Alright, hopefully I won't get in the way and block the camera up too much. Um, what I'm going to be using is uh, a 3 horsepower coil. Um, that's just what my motors are set up for. Um, the one thing you'll notice about the 3 horsepower fly with the coil is there is no real reference as to you know where the pickup coil or pickup spot is for referencing the timing mark. Um, I'm going to show you guys you know what what we use to reference that, where I got the information. Also, uh, you know I'll put up a picture here of where you would use the reference point if you were using a five horsepower coil that does have that round little metal. Uh, ignition coil pickup point and where you would want to put that pickup in relationship to the magnet when you're setting the timing. All right, we've got our dial caliper or our dial indicator set up on top of the motor. I've just got a small eighth-inch thick metal plate that I, my magnet, you know, drill the hole in it, put it through one of the head bolt holes. You know, just make sure you don't cover up the piston or even the valves. You can set your di magnetic base dial indicator right on that. Um, first thing we're going to want to do is bring the piston up to the very top and you know find the very top of the travel and set our dial indicator to zero verify that we are yep we are right at zero now when we talk about in the hole timing we're going to back the motor off where it comes around 350 thousandths. I'm actually going to go a little bit past 350 and then come back up into it as if I were coming up on the compression stroke. And so we're going to come back one, two, three, gone past 350, now we're going to come back up to 350, maybe having a wrench on this would be a little bit more, just very gently, 
Oh, went a little fast. Alright. Now there's 350 in the hole. Now, with the three horsepower coil that doesn't have the inductive pickup sticking out the bottom with it, what you want to do is line up this flat edge with, if, with the leading edge of the magnet. So what you're going to end up with is the coil, if I get it to, magnets are relatively strong here, what you're going to end up with is something like that if you were to draw a straight line over on the other side. You draw a straight line down with. Yeah, the edge of my cor corner here wasn't all bent up. Straight line down from the edge of the pickup to the edge of the coil or to the edge of the magnet. That would be your reference mark. Okay, now that we've got our coil reference as to where you know on the timing mark, just look in, you know, look through, line up the uh, hole at the back. Yes, I'm doing this with everything stuck in. Just get one of the coil bolts started. Now, come to the other side. Be careful you don't cross thread these when you put them in because they are going right into aluminum. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the coil off the magnet. Our timing should, you know, with this coil bracket, our timing should be pretty much locked in. We can do a little bit of fine tuning, but not much. You know, maybe a couple thousandths either way. And now we're going to set our uh, coil gap, you know, our air gap. And to do that, we just loosen the, our coil up here a little bit. Take two business cards, slide the business cards in between the flywheel and the coil, we just lightly snug these so that when we remove them and go back and double check our timing, it's a uh, Strength, the force of the magnet doesn't pull the coil right down onto. Alright, where are we? Alright. There's zero. Come back. One, two, three. A little bit past. Come back up. Sorry if 
I'm getting my head in the way. 350 thousandths. Shake it with our little plastic gauge that's not magnetic. And as you can see, the edge of the coil is lined up right with that edge of the magnet. And that is how you set the coil ignition timing on and the air gap on, you know, with the in the hole method using a three horsepower flywheel and the adjustable timing bracket. Alright, I hope you guys learned a little something from this and I was able to help you out. Um, as you can see, setting the coil timing with the in the hole method, not all that hard, especially when you have the adjustable timing br bracket or the adjustable coil bracket. Um, if you were using an adjustable flywheel, you just simply move the flywheel back and forth while taking your readings. Um, if you're using doing this on an old Raptor or Blockzilla that does not have the you know, either the timing bracket or an adjustable flywheel and you were using the offset keyways, you just have to repeat the process each time you replace the keyway until you found the one that gave you, you know, the desired in the hole reading. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.